It's funny how many theists you find who are convinced that they know how to debate with an atheist without ever having the slightest clue what an atheist, specifically a rational atheist, is like. It's clear that none of these people have ever been atheists, have ever debated atheists, or have any substantive experience with atheists. They're just preaching to an equally ignorant audience and spreading their own bewilderment. What's even funnier, a large percentage of these people, at least in my experience, tend to be Catholics. I took on Robert Barron not too long ago, and he made many of the same ridiculous claims in his arguments that he knew how to debate atheists too. In fact, in recent weeks, I've met a lot of very arrogant Catholics who seem to believe that everything they believe is true because they believe it, and no amount of discussion or debate, no matter what kind of evidence is presented, can ever change their minds at all. Well, here we go again as I look at Scott M. Sullivan's quick tip number one for arguing with an atheist. Hey guys, Scott Sullivan here from Classical Theist. I want to give you a few video tips on how to argue with an atheist. And the first one is what I call avoid the atheistic fundamentalist. And this is, this is very important because before you even engage in this kind of discussion at all, you have to determine, does this person really deserve an answer or not? Let's be perfectly honest here. He means, can you provide an answer or not? He's not the only theist to claim that he can take on atheists, and almost all of them start off by saying, never talk to people who know more than you do. Sure, they don't put it that way, but that's really what they mean. He doesn't want you to take on anyone educated, either in science or religion, that will make you look bad, or worse, make you question any of these ridiculous little tips. Therefore, throw out anyone who knows more than you do, who can answer your questions, and who understands your religious dogma. Apologists never do well with people who have a clue. See, I'm a firm believer that every Christian should be ready and able to, to give a good answer to honest, open-minded inquirers. That's great. If you, if you have a person like that, then yes, absolutely, you should engage in the discussion. That depends on how you define those terms, of course. If you just want to do away with anyone who sees through your theological bullshit and knows how to blow holes through your religious beliefs, that's not really judging people on value. It's hiding behind a wall of theological ignorance from anyone who knows more than you do. But unfortunately, many atheists aren't like that. I mean, many of them are, you run into online are closed-minded and mean-spirited, and honestly, they're relatively uneducated. I mean, you can go out and you can read a few atheist blogs and you know, learn a couple of logical fallacies, but that does not make you a scholar, and that's what many of these people seem to be doing. So, you know, ironically, these, these types of uh, closed-minded, blind-faith atheists, they're just like the closed-minded, blind-faith Christian that they claim to condemn. They're, they're not open to rational discussion. They're not open to reason. They just want to dogmatically pound their view home and make sure the whole world knows about it. My, someone has been looking in the mirror, haven't they? Now, while yes, there can certainly be dogmatic, uneducated atheists, there really aren't many theists that don't fall into these categories. Faith, by its very nature, is dogmatic because it cannot be tested by logic, reason, or evidence. The religious believe it, not because they've been convinced of its truth through critical thinking, but because it feels good and they value emotional comfort over factual truth. This is, of course, not the first time we've seen people like this who take all of the negative characteristics of the religious and pretend that they're shared by the atheist. I'd wager I know more about this religion than he does. I just don't swallow it hook, line, and sinker. So I'm suggesting to you that you shouldn't waste your time on these people. I mean, I certainly don't. I get emails and messages from these people all the time, but I just don't bother because it is a waste of time. It's only a waste of time if you don't actually care whether your beliefs are factually true. And clearly, this guy does not. I have no idea why, but Catholics tend to be much more prone to this kind of thinking, that Catholicism is automatically better than anyone else. It doesn't have to be demonstrated or defended or shown to be reasonable. It just is, and anyone who disagrees is automatically wrong. Let's not let the air of inherent superiority get in the way of actually examining your beliefs critically. So the first rule for arguing with an atheist is you have to decide, is this person an honest, open-minded, serious inquirer or not? And there's really no hard and fast rule here for determining this. You have to use your prudence. You have to look at the situation. You kind of you know, read the tone of the message and things like this. But you have to do this sort of thing. 
or else you could really just waste a whole lot of time. So please do that before you even engage in this sort of, in this sort of discussion. So that's it for this video. If you like this and want more videos like this, then go ahead and click this button right here. Click the subscribe button. That'll subscribe you to my channel and you'll be notified when the next video comes out. In other words, don't argue with anyone who will present any kind of challenge to your dogmatically held beliefs. Entirely ignore the fact that your own beliefs are every bit as dogmatic and fanatical as you claim the intelligent atheists are. Forget that you're expected to support and defend your own belief systems, not just proselytize to anyone who comes along and expect them to swallow your poorly formed and utterly unsupported ideas without question. I also want to give you my free book here. Click this link. That'll take you to my website. This is my free How to Answer a Jesus Critic book. And what this is, this is a short little read on how to answer the most common objections to Christianity. Now, if you're on a mobile device, these links in the video don't work. Just click them down there in the video description. So thanks for watching this video, and God bless. Of course, the only way to get his quote-unquote free book is to give them your email address. It isn't something you can just download anonymously. You have to open yourself up to spam. Sure, they claim they won't spam you, but if they aren't going to, they have no need whatsoever for your email address. And honestly, are you going to trust this guy? I sure wouldn't. So that's part one. Do we really think that things will improve as time goes on? As of this recording, I think he has six quick tips out, and I plan on taking them all on one by one. The more that these people open their mouths, the more that we can see just how little they know, and how little interest they have in actually being right. Faith fixes all failures, and these people really are nothing but failures on a grand scale. Next time, we talk about logic, which, considering how badly our other apologists have fared in this area, ought to be entertaining. Please remember, like, subscribe, and share, and if you have something to say, let me know in the comments. Until we meet again, take care.